Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at this brand new BP Custom Knives Fixed Utility Knife. Y'all probably know the initials, but we got kids watching so we're not going to go through there. But I started talking with Brandon before this knife and I was trying to see if I could get on his books for one of his wasp models. And we also discussed a giveaway. If you did not enter this giveaway, if you missed my, my video where I talked about the giveaway, he's going to be giving away, I'll pop up on the screen, one of these three for y'all to choose from. And if you have not entered yet, all you have to do is go to my Instagram. I'm just saying go to mine because they're linked because it's a collaboration post. Go to my last post, go to that post, and in the description it tells you exactly how to enter. And you could be entered in to win one of those awesome fixed blades and the awesome leather sheath that comes with it. This new model of his popped up on his Instagram and I was in awe because I already know I like this blade shape because it kind of reminds me of another fixed blade that I loved a whole lot and we'll talk about that in a minute. So it comes with a kydex sheath. I don't think there was a belt clip attachment that I can recall but y'all know I would have threw a, a three by three ulti clip on it. That's just my preferred means and this one works perfectly because it, it stays high, high enough to where I can pull it out. I can get my hand in there easily to pull the knife out nice positive click no rattle so here's a look at this absolutely stunning custom fixed blade from brandon park of bp custom knives so you have this beautiful versatile blade here very easy to get that tip down into things to do drag cuts you have that upward arc in that belly so it's a very gradual belly but as you can see it goes up like that so you still do in-hand cuts pretty darn easy and cutting on a flat surface is going to be an absolute breeze for this knife the total length on this one is 7.25 inches long he also does a six and a half inch version he sells these through a lotto on his instagram if you're interested in picking one of these up definitely follow him and you will have to do that anyway to get in on our giveaway he does a lotto on these and I think he, right now he's capable of making, I think four per week, if I remember correctly. And he's trying to ramp up production more and more as he goes. The seven and a quarter versions come with a three inch cutting edge. And this one is in the CPM MagnaCut steel. I think he said at 64 HRC. Awesome. Take a look at these satin grinds. They are absolutely stunning. You have vertical satin on your primary and on your top swedge. And then you have, looks like a horizontal brush satin on the flats. I love, love his Maker's Mark BP USA. Excellent sharpening choil. His plunge grind is where my fingernail is right there. So you're going to have all that sharpening light before to widen up. And on this side, it's sterile. You have the MC, which stands for, I'm guessing, Magna Cut. And then you can see the thinness in that grind by that tip. But it's not overly dainty. This should be an outstanding performer, especially since this thing is five to six thousandths behind the edge right now. When I say nice and thin, I'm going to try to get it to, to focus right there by my fingernail. Just look how thin. I love that, especially when it's got a custom heat treat to it. I've tested some like this in the past, and man, oh man, they usually perform on a whole nother level. And another thing you don't have to worry about with this knife is a burnt edge because he's not sharpening them on a belt, which a lot of production companies do and a lot of custom makers, just so they can put a quick edge on it. They hurry up, sharpen it on a belt. And what that does is, is it at the very apex, being it's so thin, it overheats that apex and it can cause you to have a burnt edge. And that just means that it's going to lose its sharpness rather quickly. So once you sharpen that a few times, that usually gets rid of that kind of stuff. But you don't have to worry about it here because he sharpens all these on the TS Prof Cadet system. I've reviewed that system on the channel and it's an absolute excellent, excellent fixed angle knife, knife sharpening system. And plus, it's going to give you perfect, it should give you perfectly even bevels, which we have here. Speaking of perfectly even bevels, I threw this on my goniometer just so I can see what he sharpens these at. And this thing read, when I say perfectly, 20 degrees per side, this thing is perfect. So this one sharpened at 20 degrees per side with that five to six thousandths behind the edge. Let's see how this thing performs. Man, oh man, did this thing come sharp. And it's knives like this that make me really rethink all my, my knife, knife buying decisions over the last 10, 15 years. 
you know this knife and a couple of my other I got two or three other custom fixed blades they all you know they'll they'll show you how a a true knife should perform in said steel and this time we're in magna cut you know my first taste of that was with uh, my schwartz overland sport and then my abrams from arc and iron and now the bp custom fixed utility knife i mean this thing is super thin behind the edge slicing like a laser beam and i'll tell you what once i'm done with this i'm probably gonna lay my edge back i like i like to have them even perform even better i think this one's at 20 degrees per side no, nothing wrong with that especially at six thousandths behind the edge so i'll probably lay it back to about 17 degrees and i found that magna cut likes a nice toothy edge at around 600 grit strop with about 12 micron and it's just a performance beast so i can only imagine what this thing's going to be like after i put that kind of edge on it but I'm just over the moon that he sharpens it by hand. You know how awesome that is? And I'm just showing you how deep this thing wants to cut. It was so hard to make a fine curl because I just kept wanting to take large chunks out of this piece of pine. Very comfortable handle too. And of course, we got that versatile blade. That tip is a little scalpel. I could have probably did that all day long. It felt like there's nothing in front of me, just like all this other material. Even with that 20 degrees per side edge bevel, it is performing on a, a whole new level there's nothing better than cutting with a knife with the high hardness or the correct hardness should i say and good blade geometry if you've never had something either reground or bought a fixed blade or a custom knife with nice thin edge geometry with the proper rockwell then you don't know what you're missing i i get it i know not everybody can afford those but they have some custom fixed blade makers that are super super reasonable i mean look at look at uh steve super Seal steve chef clara he, his right now are like 200 bucks you know but he he still doesn't have she's for him yet so that's understandable but man if, if you ever get the opportunity to cut with a, a knife that is you know to this precision as far as performance based it will definitely definitely make you make you go huh with all your other knives that you buy it is, I'm, I, when I say I'm barely putting any pressure into this half inch sisal rope, that's an understatement. I, you can see me switching grips just to see which one I like because they're both super comfortable and I'm using that pointer finger grip. So that right there is an indicator that it is ridiculously sharp. And one thing I found with the sisal rope that is always a factor, if your sisal rope gets loose on you, it'll look like the knife struggles. But no, it is because that it basically flattens out and makes your your pressure increase. Like you got to put a little bit more pressure into it. Not that it's not cutting it as cleanly. It's just because it has flattened out on you. And that's something that I hate. That's one thing I hate about sisal rope. And when I get a knife that's dull, that's another thing I hate. Because sisal rope is absolutely terrible to cut. And it's the reason for all the blisters all over my hands 24-7. I have a permanent blister from this stupid rope. But this thing was an absolute blast. Uh, we stopped at, I think, 205 cuts. And that's just, the I, I should have cut a bigger piece. I had two pieces on deck. I thought that would be enough. But, nope. Sorry about that. But definitely could have done more. And we'll test that edge out after I get done. Now let's see what that edge is like. It feels great. So I'm talking about people slow cut no hang-ups <laughs> yeah I can strop it back to stupid sharp and that was a lot of cutting so to say this thing performed great is an understatement Man, it, it's just so nice whenever you get something like this that slices outstanding and holds that edge so, so well. It just puts all the production knives I have to shame for the most part, especially in the thinness department. Now, I don't, I, there's not many production knives that can get them this thin. I don't, I don't really know of any. Now, we'll talk about the Ergos. You have a very neutral handle with a little bit of a swell right there. 
nice thickness to those scales so it fills out the hand nicely and that's something that I really really love in my fixed blades because whenever you don't have that thick handle if you're doing prolonged cutting it usually fatigues your wrist and your forearms because you're really having to hold on to it tight so it doesn't twist in the hand this one I had no issues whatsoever and you have enough thickness if you want to do that like pinch grip right here to do a sawing type cut you have that that you can grab a hold to or I can do the pointer finger grip no problem and if you had to do the gas station fighting knife grip you could easily do that very comfortably or the pull cut like that very comfortable as well now let's take a look at these beautiful vintage butterscotch micarta scales I think it's paper or might have been linen I'm not sure but he's got a high luster polish on them and then you see the different colorations that's where the sunlight hit it a long time ago maybe it was poking out and see how it's like darker in some spots down here and then lighter that's just where the sunlight hits that micarta over the years and i think it looks stunning now the only problem when you have polished scales like this they look absolutely wonderful but they can be a little slick now this one excellent you know i had no issues with it feeling like it was going to slide out of my hand or anything i don't know if that would be the case during the winter but that's okay i can carry something else during the winter if that's a problem he does an excellent excellent job of softening all these edges as you can see there comes around here all these are nice and softened he does a great job with that because they're just flat scales but the softening around the edges makes them hand melting the scales are nice and even if you look right here we have bolt-on construction look, look at those nice torques right there that's a torx t20 outstanding nice chamfer you do have a lanyard hole right here that has been chamfered as well so if for any reason i need to take these scales off and clean underneath there i could easily do that quick shot in the pocket and being that i have to wear these lightweight shorts a lot that's how I usually carry them. So I wanted to see how comfortable it was with the three by three. As you can see, that's all you have sticking out of the pocket when you're carrying it in shorts like this. Then I can just pull it to the side, being that it has a thumb ramp, pull it out, use it. And then I usually just pop that back out. And there we go. Carries great. Also carried it in pants and you can't even see it once my shirt's sit, sitting over it. Now for the weight without the sheath is 127.6 grams or four and a half ounces with the sheath. But you got to factor in that I have the Nulti clip on there. 6.2, let's just call it 6.2 ounces. Now I carried this in lightweight shorts for the last several days and no problem whatsoever, very comfortable. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Bradford Guardian 3.5 and we have the Schwartz Knives Overland Sport. This is the knife I was talking about that I knew I'd probably like that because it has that same upward sweep, love that. But it's a little bit shorter than 3.5. Next up we have the White River Knives Sendero and the Arkin Iron Abrams. It's a hair shorter than the Sendero and it's a good bit longer than the Abrams. Next, we have the White River Ursus Cub and the Bark River Bravo EDC. Cub's a little bit longer and the Bravo EDC is a hair shorter. And two quick locking folders. We have the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. It's similar, more similar to the Rat 2. All right, now for my nitpicks and plates. Now, these are just nitpicks because this is a custom knife. This is one guy doing all the work by hand. So, look, I'm just being nitpicky here. It, it, I would buy this knife again tomorrow. That's all I want to say. First thing, I think uh, it, it would benefit to use a little bit thicker Kydex. It, I just, the only reason I say this, it, I mean, it fits great. No rattle. But I have found that the thinner Kydex over time will start to loosen up a lot quicker. Not something hard to fix, but you know, just something I want to mention. And the fitment on the scales, perfect on this side, completely flush, very nice. You have somewhat of like a shadow boxing over here. I mean, it's very, very minor, which not a big deal at all. I think you just should have went all the way around with it. Very minor, mine's nice and comfortable. And like I said, I would not hesitate to buy it again tomorrow. That's just me. But my final thoughts, you know, this is a custom fixed blade, so it's an investment. I think I paid $350 for this. That is a lot of money. I get it. But if you're looking for a one and done, then I think this is a great option. 
Uh, it's going to be an outstanding performer as long as you treat it like a performer. You didn't see me batoning with this one because it's six thousandths behind the edge. That's kind of stupid. I've done it before, and y'all will hear about that later on <laughs> once I get a certain knife back. But it's not smart, and I learned my lesson the hard way, being stupid. So, you know, if you're looking for an outstanding performer that's going to hold an edge very, very well, and you want to help support a USA-made custom knife maker who is you know trying to support his family then bp customs is a, definitely an excellent option to check out like i said during the cutting you know after using something like this it definitely definitely makes me rethink all my knife purchasing decisions over the last 15 plus years this one has wowed me so there you go. Like I said, don't forget, if you haven't entered the giveaway, go to my Instagram. My last post that I put, you'll see a picture of the three knives that you can choose from. Look in the description, follow the rules there. I will have a link to that down below as well and BP Custom Knives down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can also ask down below. And I'm sure if it's something for Brandon to answer, he could probably do his best to answer them for y'all. And I hope every one of y'all is having an absolute, absolute amazing Sunday. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.